Okay, so this is Tammy Tway. You know, thank you for coming out um, to MidCamp. It's always exciting to be here and to present with everyone. Uh, make sure that you can grab the slides at the link at the top um, to follow along. So a little bit about me. My name is Larry Longton. I live here in Chicago. Um, I usually tweet very rarely, but I threw it up there just in case. I work for a company called Chromatic. We are we're a distributed team, so we have team members all around the world. Um, so check us out. And now let's just dive right into the subject matter of today, Taming Twig. So in my own experience of using Twig the past few years with Drupal 8, there's some common problems that I've experienced and that have been really frustrating. And when I look at like Stack Exchange or Stack Overflow, if you look at all of the problems, which I did the past few weeks, to see and try to distill them into the same sort of categories. Um, there's four common categories. So the first one is that your changes just don't appear. You try to print something on the screen with Twig and it doesn't appear at all. The second one is that when you call a variable in a Twig template, um, your output just isn't what you expected. You try to call in a field and it doesn't appear. And the third and fourth ones are that your site is unavailable or that it's just unresponsive at all. So you're unable to actually work with the site anymore. So for the talk today, we're gonna to talk about how to address those four common problems. So first, we're gonna talk about how to debug Twig. Um, second, we're gonna talk about the values that you can find within your template. Third, about resolving any sort of PHP errors and how to avoid them. Um, fourth, the dreaded white screen of death when your site becomes unresponsive. And finally, when something is um, too difficult to solve by yourself, then where to go for that sort of help. So first, uh, debugging Twig. Let's talk about our debug setup. <coughs> so in our services.yaml file in site slash default, we are able to change some values so that we can make sure that we can debug Twig and have some sort of um, tools available to us. So uh, under twig.config, we sh have to make sure that debug is set to true, that auto reload also set to true, and that caching is set to false. All of these things by default, if you were to copy the default services.yaml file and rename it, it would be the opposite of these. Now for a production site, you wanna make sure that it's the opposite of these, but when you're locally developing or working on a development site, and you're trying to figure out what's going on with your Twig templates, make sure that these are set as seen here. Now the output when you inspect something with like a Chrome inspector with those um, values set in your services.yaml file will look something like this. You'll be able to see the sort of files and suggestions that Drupal and Twig are looking through in terms of what um, file or what Twig file is being called in and the kind of files that you have available to you. So in this case, we can see that it gets as specific as a node file with the node ID, so you can alter a specific node. Or you can um, use a node type, so in our case we're using the basic page template. We have node dash dash page available to us here. And finally we have our basic node.html.twig file. So services.yaml is really helpful to just know when you're working with a lot of different templates and different fields and things are being called in, you'll have a better idea of what Twig file to work in to address the issue that you want to address. Now available to us also is uh, the dump file with Twig. So here we're just calling dump on content.field underscore header. So here we're just going to be calling in our field header and if we want to look at what that looks like when it's printed out by default, we just get this array of a bunch of different um, keys. Now we can call in these different keys, we can manipulate them in order to pull in the values in Twig that we're trying to find. Now another tool that's um, really useful and pretty common is to use Devel. Devel comes with a bunch of great things, Devel in and of itself, and there's a module in it called Devel Kint. This allows us to use the can function, which we call in the same way that we use the dump function. <coughs> so 
here we're calling a kint on classes, which is a part of the page that twig um, HTML that twig uh, file, and it outputs onto the page in a similar way as our dump function, except that we have these sort of nested arrays that we can dig into. And so uh, what gets loaded is instead of having that ugly sort of uh, dump array, which is just a bunch of keys, you can actually go and find your key, select it, and, and find more details about what you're trying to find out there. Now, when using Kint, I don't know if um, people have experienced it here, but in my own experience, I found that it's not as performative as dump, and that there's usually like a bunch of problems sometimes. So you're like, you try to do Kint on a file or a variable, and like things just um, the, like the site doesn't load, your memory gets timed out. <coughs> um, so there's another tool that I just found out about um, in this past year, which is it takes the best of both worlds. So you're, you have the ability to use uh, dump, which usually is pretty consistent in terms of its memory usage. But you also get a nice output like this, where you can click through and find the values you're trying to find within a nested array. And that tool is this contributed module called uh, Twig bar dumper. So here you have the ability to call your Twig variable and to um, cycle through it and find the values that you want to do just by going through the nested arrays to find the specific value <coughs> that you want to find. So now that we have these tools, these are the tools that we'll be talking about today, let's talk about how we actually find the values specific in Twig <coughs> when we're working with Drupal. So what we're going to talk about first is just like the generic sort of um, like a generic field when you're working um, with a node template or an entity template of any sort. So a popular one is using nodes, you're using taxonomy terms, uh, <coughs> contributed module called paragraphs is becoming more and more common. These are the sort of entities that this um, applies to. So you have, when you work with a Twig template, a content object. Within that content object, you have all the fields that are on that entity. So we're using dot notation here, so content dot field name, in order to call our field and to output the sort of um, markup and data that we have. <coughs> so in terms of like a vanilla sort of approach, this applies in most cases. Just calling content dot your field name. Now, we're going to look at a few different examples that are a bit different than just the content dot field name. For example, when we try to find our links, if we were to have a <coughs> field called field link, that's just a generic Drupal field that um, we use for links. When we call that, it outputs both our link and the text or the title associated with that link, which in a lot of cases, maybe that's what you want. You just want um, an anchor tag with a link and some text. But if you want to add a class or you want to do something to those links or to modify them, it, it requires a bit more effort. So here we want to add a button class so that we can you know, present our link in a nice way that looks like a button. Now if we were to just call content.field underscore link, we wouldn't have access to this. So we can split that out by accessing um, an array within there that has a URL key and a title key. So we can split certain objects within Twig and manipulate them how we see fit. Now taking this along, now this is also very specific. So when you're working with Twig, usually you use dot notation for all fields. So content dot field link dot an entity or dot image or something. But for fields, it's specific to fields where you would use the array notation here to get within there. Now to find this, this is done by using Twig and the debug functions to find the use cases for this. But this is a very prominent use case. Now similarly, if we want to work with our files, um, we have to make sure we're calling the file URL. So we're here we're just ensuring that in our template we are separating out the 
file URL value and calling the file URL function on it to make sure it is parsed correctly. So the notation here, we're still using dot notation. We're calling node, which is an entity, dot field value to get, or sorry, excuse me, dot field file to get our file field. We're calling dot entity to grab the file entity that's associated with our file. Because for example, in Drupal, if you're using a standard Drupal file or image field, um, those are entities or objects that are stored on the fields. So as we chain these sort of dot notations from node dot file field file to the entity and on that entity we can get the URI and within there we can grab the value of the URI which allows us to translate it into a URL. So with images it's essentially the same sort of story. When we call our image field we grab the entity on there, we grab the URI, and we turn that into a value. But with images, it's a little bit different in that images have the image file, which is just like a file, but then there's also titles that you can associate with images. There's also alt text for accessibility that you can use. And if we want to do special things with this, so in particular, a really good use case for using this sort of approach is when you are working with lazy loaders. Um, sometimes they require different attributes within the HTML. And in order to pass in what it wants, we're going to have to dig a bit deeper. So we have our generic sort of image approach with turning our image into a URL. We're grabbing like an alt field here. This is really particular with how we do it. So you think that the image field and the alt tag or the title that's associated with it would be on the image itself. That seems to be, I mean, that's what I thought for a long time until I finally discovered that the alt and the text associated with it is on the image field and not the image file. So that's a clear distinction of of how we would go dig deeper into the values that are available to us within the image field in order to grab um, content from there. Now here we're going to talk a really a little bit about the without filter that Twig has available to us. So in a lot of different templates if you were to look at the default implementations, you would see that there's a content variable there. Um, and it doesn't usually have any sort of uh, dot notation that you know, links to fields or have anything associated with it. Usually it's just content. And for the most part, that could be good if you just want to output a lot of different fields in how you've configured them within uh, Drupal site builder sort of um, configurations of a node or a paragraph or an entity type, but we have some use cases where you want to include all the content except for one. You want to separate one of those fields out. Now using the without filter within Twig, we can pass in the machine name of a field to make sure that that field gets excluded from the render. And so we can use that field name um, somewhere else. So here we are just printing out all of our content within our main div. And outside of that, in a sidebar, we're going to put in our field name. So here we can start to put the pieces together of how we would separate out different pieces of content um, that are output in our Twig templates. Now there's a few use cases where we have these two different variables within a Twig template that are a bit different than how you usually approach an entity type like a node or a taxonomy term or a paragraph. For example, here we have items. And items is usually a field, for example, a list field with text where there's multiple items, multiple different values 
associated with it. Now, in this one in particular, we're talking about a field that is a, it could either be an integer list field, it can either be a string um, collection. So we're calling our field machine name, whatever it's called. So for example, field dash list dot um, HTML dot twig. And uh, we're calling our, we're calling um, a for loop on the items to make sure that we are iterating through each and every item. And then on each item in and of itself, there is content. And content is attached to that specific field item to output um, each of those things. Now, how is this valuable? Like this, if you opened up a field within Drupal and just looked at the default implementation, it would look exactly like this. But if we wanted to do more with it, let's say that you had, let's say that you wanted to loop through your items and apply different classes, those things are available to us. And it's outside of the scope of this talk in particular, since there is a loop index um, within Twig that we can go through and apply different things. But within this context, using debug functions, you're, you'll be able to find what's within the content variable to explore what's in your field specifically. Rows works in almost the same sort of way. So views is a common tool that we all use when we're building sites with Drupal. And within the rows, object we have a row and within there there's content. Now that content is usually defined by the sort of configurations that we have set up for our views, whether we're calling in fields when we set up our views or if we're calling in a view mode um, to output, output different node types. So digging deeper into the content variables is something that it took me a while to figure out and to understand that you know content isn't this like the, the content variable is available almost everywhere but each implementation is slightly different so using debug functions will be really helpful in terms of finding out and understanding exactly what you need to do to output the content that you want so let's put all of these together and take a look at an example of a field called neighborhoods that just has the neighborhoods of Chicago's feet um, the neighborhoods of Chicago. So in our row, we're going to exclude that neighborhood's field because we want to do something specific to it. And here, this might seem super intimidating in terms of what's available within the content variable. So if we were just to go and step through it, we have rows, which is all of the different pieces of content available to us within the view. Uh, within the content of a specific <coughs> row, we have a view key that gives us access to uh, a few different things. So if we chain in the style plugin and pull in the render tokens, Let's start it. Let's start it. Let's step, take a. Let's take a little bit of a step back in terms of what what's all, what all is going here with this view. Okay, so so the content that we have available to us is um, a part of this view key, and what we're going to be passing into it is going to be the twig markup that that field that 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 views is going to be outputting. So in the end, we're going to be calling our uh, field underscore neighborhoods as a variable, as we see at the, ver at the very bottom before the end for. So this is within the same, it's the same notation as if you were working directly within a twig template. So you have to have the double curly braces on both sides. It's a bit different because, I mean, with a lot of how we would work with these sort of things, you would think that you could just pass in the name of the field in and of itself without the curly braces, braces, but that doesn't work since we're calling render tokens before that. Now the loop index just means that loop dot index zero means what key 
for what number of row you're outputting. So it starts at zero, one, two, three. All it's doing is just making sure that it is iterating through each and every row available to us. And uh, the style plugin is what allows us to have access to this sort of content. Now there's a really handy contributed module. So the way that we talked about everything so far is just if you were to download Drupal 8, install it out of the box, you know, work with some of the default themes or, or check out any, any of those sort of things, that's how you'd approach it. There's a contributed module called twig underscore field value. And it gives us these very specific sort of filters where instead of having to dig through the content variable, instead of having to dig through these sort of things, we can pass in filters on these fields in order to output the content that we want. So we have field label, which it, it, it's all very straightforward in terms of what it's doing. It returns the label. The value just returns uh, your field value without any of the wrappers, without any of the sort of um, um, divs or things that are associated with them. We have field raw, which is just like the straight raw value that's being stored within your database. And then we have this special one called field target entity. Now this returns your referenced object of a field. Now keep this target entity one in mind because it, it, it will come in useful in the next few slides. So we're talking about our neighborhoods field once again. Using twig field value, we can get the label and we can get that value and get the output um, that we design here. So we just see the neighborhoods, we, say, we see that we're in Lincoln Park. It's very straightforward in terms of doing that. It, it's a matter of, a, of preference in terms of how you yourself, if you're working by yourself with Twig, want to, want to approach this sort of thing. Um, I know that this can be contentious with development teams in terms of some teams might not want to use this um, contributed module or have that sort of dependency with their sort of, with the projects that they're on. So um, it's a sort of discussion you need to have. Some people might feel more comfortable with Twig using these sort of um, filters instead of the dot notation to get the values that we're looking for. But I would lobby in the sense that you could do both, they're not mutually exclusive. If you wanted to have both, your code base might look a bit messy because you'd have filters and dot notation calling in field values all over the place. So it might not be the best approach to do so, um, to combine them, but the field target entity filter that's available to us allows us to do really cool things. So this is why if I were, um, I'll, uh, if I were working with a team and lobbying for this, um, this contributing module, this to me makes it way more accessible for someone who's less experienced with Twig to, to start to deal with some of the common issues when we get into more uh, expert use cases like reference entities. So here, we have a piece of content, a node, that has an article reference. Um, and if we were to call that, we would just get the whole article in and of itself. But let's say we just want a specific value. We just want one field on that entity. If we call in and use the field target entity filter, that gives us access to all of the fields that are available on that entity in and of itself. So if you're using nested entities with your nodes and your paragraphs, um, this is a really great use case in order to control the sort of markup and to have easier access to some of the values within those entities without having to do anything with a preprocessor. Because another approach to this would be to you know, create a custom module or, or have theme hooks that you know, manipulates the reference entity, loads it, grabs a field, prints it out. There could be a lot more code to do what this does with this contributed module in and of itself. So I think it's a really cool and valuable and useful tool if you are um, working with reference entities. 
So in terms of addressing the issues with finding values, uh, these are the four basic steps in terms of how you would approach it um, in your own development environments. So first, always, as with almost everything related to Drupal, you have to make sure you clear your caches <coughs> before you reload your page. Just make sure the caches are cleared so that your memory is cleared, the site loads the latest version. Next is using uh, the Twig debug tool and inspecting the elements and seeing that you have the correct template, that what you're trying to do is within um, the same sort of naming conventions that Drupal is trying to use. Make sure that you have the right field and machine name and the property. Um, if you don't, if you have typos, if, you, if, if things are a bit off, uh, nothing will appear. And finally, you can use uh, the var dumper uh, call to debug variables and to inspect elements that way. So this next portions of this talk are just going to be talking mostly about how to address a bit more some issues that are um, a big headache in my own experience as I've worked with Plague. So first is just avoiding PHP errors. Now when we encounter these sort of errors, there's usually two main reasons why they're happening for the most part. If you're just working with Twig or you're working within the theme, there are two primary places where things can go wrong. The first place is within the preprocessor. So this might be a common sort of site when you're working, you're making active changes locally, you're making, uh, and, and things seem to go wrong. You get this unexpected error page, please try again later, which means like fix it instead of just reloading the page. Pre-processing issues is the first place to look in terms of if there are errors on your site and you're just working with Twig, check there first. Now within the <coughs> database log configuration, we can go in there and see what error we have. So in the error, um, before I'm passing in an incorrect render key and it's causing problems in the array. So that's why we have that error. You can, you can find it, you can dig a bit deeper and see exactly what's happening and um, try to remedy it that way so you're not flying blind. The second place to look if you're encountering errors with Twig is just within Twig itself. Uh, it's usually pretty forgiving, but if you have any sort of syntax errors, then you're gonna encounter some problems. If um, you're using your filters incorrectly, some filters within Twig and the documentation only accept a certain number of parameters that you can pass in, like field values or that sort of thing. So if you're encountering these sort of issues with Twig, um, those are the two places to look. And we also can see that in our database logging, where here we have a syntax error because there's an extra curly brace um, outside of the context of what Twig is trying to render. So we're not using our filter correctly there. So a checklist for PHP errors. First, just make sure to clear caches. Sometimes that could fix it if you think everything else is okay. Second is to make sure you can check your admin slash um, reports and recent log messages going into the database logger to see the sort of error messaging that you see. Third, determine whether it is the pre-processing functions or the Twig file itself that's causing you problems. And then finally, try to address uh, that problematic line or uh, the name of the file if it's a Twig um, issue. <coughs> now, if you go through all of these steps and you're still having issues, um, one great way that I'm sure we all have experienced is just to like copy the error and, and paste it into Google and like see what other people have done. Uh, that's usually will give you enough tools to start to help find out the issues that you're encountering and seeing them if, if they're novel, if there's something that no one's experienced or if it's something that a lot of people have then you can deal with it that way. Now, the, now, in terms of all the errors that you encounter, like a white screen of death when you're developing is usually, uh, it's just a big headache. It, it can be a big time sink, <coughs> especially if you're only working with Twig or the theme and you're, you're not doing anything sort of uh, intensive on the back end and you come into these errors. Uh, it can be a huge sort of headache and hassle. And early on with, with Twig, when I first started, like I would encounter these issues and I wouldn't know exactly how to address them. Now, a big part of why we encounter these issues is not necessarily Twig itself, but because of the tools that we're using in conjunction with Twig. 
So this is probably something that you've seen before. I mean, I, I see it all the time. It's really frustrating where you try to load your site, you get a fatal error. It says your memory usage is being exceeded. Now, there's a, there's a few reasons why this happens in the first place. But the biggest sort of takeaway is just that Drupal 8 is object oriented and there's a lot of arrays and there's a lot of objects that are being loaded. So when you try to call a debug function on, um, on certain variables within your files, the sort of memory usage that is trying to output, it's not just outputting the field like you'd expect, but there's a lot of metadata, there's a lot of different things within an object that causes your memory to, to overflow. And so, that's essentially why this is happening is in this specific example we're calling Kent. Now I, I, I used to love Kent, I'm a big fan of Twig, uh, Var Dumper, just because Kent seems to consistently give me these problems no matter what sort of project I'm on or development environment uh, I work in, work within. So one is just to um, maybe not use rely on Kent as much and use some of the other tools available to us. But first let's talk about uh, the dump function that's available out of the box without any um, contributed modules. So white screen of death, now this is not mine, this is credit to Morin in terms of addressing the issue. So the, the primary issue, you're calling a debug function, in your, your files, your, your site isn't working, you can't even work with or see anything being debugged on the page. Now within every single tweak, file, we have this special keyword variable called underscore context. Now, underscore context is just an easier way of when you call the dumb function without passing anything in, it's going to be calling underscore context each and every time. Now, we have that, now passing that underscore context into a loop allows us to do some cool things. So here, all that we're doing here in this code is um, going into that context, so all of the things being loaded by Twig on that file, and getting the key and getting the value. So you're, get, you're just going through the array and seeing each and every item. And we're dumping out the value um, associated with the key so that we can see um, the sort of values that we have available to us, the sort of keys that are causing us problems. This, uh, this is a great tool to put in, in, in if you're encountering the white screen of death sort of thing and you're just like you, you just want to you know find a value. You just want to find a field um, and put it somewhere, and you can't seem to do that with the debug function. This will help you get you on your way uh, to doing that. Now, when we talk about Kint in particular, there's some things that we always have to remember, and it's to make sure that you pass in a specific variable. Like if you don't pass in anything, it's going to try to load everything, and it's usually. I mean, there's been issues in the issue queue to address this, but um, sometimes you encounter the issue of the memory gets um, uh, starts to overflow. So if you pass in a specific variable, it's going to help you to um, load in just what you want into the debug functions. For example, if you're trying to debug, trying to debug the content um, variable in and of itself and not the classes, not the metadata, the other things associated with the template, uh, you just make sure you pass that. So don't don't try to just call Kent with nothing in it. That will help you um, overcome this sort of issue with the white screen death. And finally, um, credits TH pool in terms of uh, managing the levels that Kent has. So within a pre-process function, so this would be within either a module file or a theme file. You can paste in this Kent required, make sure you have um, Kent class available to you, and then uh, set the max levels. So Kent by itself is just gonna try to load in every single item and metadata associated with that. So like you have a node, it's going to try to load in your, your fields. It's going to try to load in any sort of entity references and the fields associated with that. So you can, you, there's a lot of different levels that um, Kint is trying to do for you. And if you have unlimited memory, you'd be able to see it all. But in our own environments, usually we're limited to the amount of memory that we have. So making sure that our max levels is set gives us enough leeway to um, dig a bit deeper into the content variables and what we have available to us um, so that we can still work with can still kind of debug and, and go through the process without you know not being able to access our site at all 
Now, a few other tools that we have available to us for widescreen of death is memory usage. Like if you um, have a modern computer and you're working locally, you can increase your memory usage by a lot. Um, I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it unless you get super frustrated, which I've gotten super frustrated and said like the max, like 16 gigs, like try to load it. <laughs> And like, um, it still didn't work. yeah, it still didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so if you want to manipulate your memory usage, and, and sometimes that can help, you can do that in your settings.php file. There's other ways to do it, but this is a really sort of simple, straightforward way to do so. And finally, if we, if if you've tried all of these things and you're still having errors in your settings.php, you can turn on all of the errors to see all of them on your page to see like what's happening. Is it, is it something different if you're working with a team that someone else breaks something that um, you can go to them for and find assistance for? So our checklist for our white screen of death is to first, one and always, make sure we clear all our caches. Finally, next is to resolve the scope of the debug function. So pass in something specific into your debugger so that it's not trying to load the whole tree of objects. Third, um, the cl opening and closing tags of your twig or preprocessed functions or files. Uh, make sure that they're there. Sometimes you can accidentally delete them and you swear that they're there, but they're not. Um, it's happened to me a lot. Another is to increase your memory usage temporarily. And finally, just display all of the errors that are there. So we're going to talk a little bit about where to go when all of these things within the checklist don't seem to help. When you've, you've tried um, using debuggers and, and you still can't seem to find the values or, or, or fix the issues when you're working with Twig. Um, like where do we go for this sort of advanced help? Now first I want to describe what I would say advanced help in the context of this talk is. So first is your site stops working completely. Like you, you try to you make a change or, or you pull down a change from Git or from um, whatever version control that you're using and your site just doesn't seem to work at all by any means. So it's completely unresponsive. You, um, you get a white screen of death. You try, to go to, you try to log in or go to the admin page to look at the database log, and it's blank too. Um, you check your database, and um, the database logging there, there's nothing new there. The site is like dead. Like, it's just completely dead. That would be one of the uh, definitions of you know, seek out some additional help. The second. Um, is that the log page, so database logging seems to be disabled, nothing comes through. And um, finally, your memory usage is just out of control. These are all issues that, with the sort of tools that we have available to us in terms of managing kint or managing our dump functions or um, using, um, uh, manipulating configuration files with how our development environment is structured. If, if all of those tools don't seem to work, that's the time to, to find some advanced help or to find, see if you can um, find someone that can help you. And now, there's some resources to find that advanced help. Now, these are some great resources that I personally have used and encountered in terms of uh, resolving some very specific use case issues with Twig. So let's go and look at a few of them. Now, the first one is Drupal Twig has a Slack. So if you're not a part of the Slack channel, uh, make sure you, you sign up and join. Uh, there's a lot of very intelligent, incredibly intelligent, and smart and helpful people there that um, that if you have a problem that seems to be novel, something that you can't find when you Google it, like people are there to help. The IRC channel is another one that's there. Uh, Drupal Twig, you can find that either people talking great things about it or getting really frustrated if you look at the uh, hashtag. Um, and then finally, like Stack Overflow um, is another place to find and seek out that sort of advanced assistance. Um, with Twig. Now, if you really encounter an issue with Twig that it seems to not be anywhere on the web, the best place to check is on the GitHub for the Twig project in and of itself. There's a lot of different contributors from Drupal, from Craft, from a lot of different PHP CMSs that are active and, and working on Twig to make it better and to address these sort of issues. So if you encounter something that seems to be like, oh, I don't I don't know if anyone's ever seen this, you know, make an issue in the issue queue or, or search it to see if it's there because it, it might be there. Now finally, with Twig, there are some really great ways in terms of uh, leveling up. So like um, taking our Twig skills to the next level. And these are just like a few plugs of tools 
and, and things that um, I found super useful. So the first one, if anyone's going to DrupalCon North America, there's a theme in Drupal 8 training. I know that this has been sort of consistent in terms of all of the Drupal cons um, by the folks that Drupalize me. Last year was sold out by the time it was mid-camp. I think right now there's still some slots, so if you're interested in like learning more about theming Drupal 8 and working with Twig and, and JavaScript and Halt, those things, I recommend checking that out. Drupalize me is another really great resource in terms of um, learning more about how Drupal works, but also Twig in particular. They have some really good content um, to dig a bit deeper into some Twig and some advanced usage. Uh, KMP University, Ryan and Lena there, they're really um, superb folks that have some um, great tools, not just with Twig, but with Symphony and Drupal 8. Um, a little plug for Chromatic HQ, um, the company I work for, we have a blog that we spend a lot of time curating um, and, and working with the sort of, and writing about, like um, debriefing about the issues that we encounter in and of ourselves and we're working with Twig, so um, be sure to check it out and subscribe to our newsletter. And finally, a really good way, probably the best way to level up your skills in Twig or anything is to go to a sprint. So we have a sprint in this room tomorrow on Sunday. Um, uh, anyone that wants to contribute or wants to, to check it out, I would encourage everyone to join. Um, I know the first time that I went to a sprint, I was like brand new to Drupal and I felt like an imposter, like I would, shouldn't have been there, but I would really recommend anyone that feels that way to just give it a try because people here are so kind in terms of um, getting people involved in the community, going through the issue queue, looking at different things. And early on in my own career, I learned so much by uh, finding mentors and finding people uh, that helped me. And a lot of them were from um, camps and conferences. So big shout out to the sprints that are happening on Sunday and also throughout the conference. So we have um, a bit of time for some questions and answers at the end. Um, so thank you all for being attentive. Yes. Could we have the URL for the slides again? Yes. I notice it's uh, it's not a great color there. So the slides are, are up there. Um, I noticed that there are a couple of um, changes I've been making to those slides. The link is gonna stay slain. The link will stay the same, but the slide will be updated. I noticed like one or two typos there. Um, yes? Hey, what was the contrib module for the um, Twig filters that were special? So field value, field label, and the reference entity in particular was the name of that contrib module? Uh, and it's why did I have to come to your talk to learn about it since you work for it? <laughs> a little secret within the company. Yeah, Twig field value. Uh, it's a. Uh, it's. I mean, I only discovered it in the past, like uh, earlier this year. So yeah, like, good that's excuse. <laughs> it's been uh, super good. Um, we'll go through all them. So let's start here. I have two hopefully really quick ones. On the first uh, debug page, it was the uh, list of all the templates, and they all had asterisks except the one that had an X. Is that the one the template that's actually loading? Yes. Okay. And then you used a loop.index0 and a loop.index later on. What's the difference between index0 and index? Okay, so uh, let's find this. So loop. So loop.index0. Index zero is just the counter of the loop. Um, okay, so that's the, the row that you're on. Takes zero, I imagine. So yes. that's the index that you use later on? Um, so loop dot index. Oh, yeah, there you go. So here, we're, we're wanting to find um, the specific value equal to two. So we're not going through each and every one in, in the array. Um, so the first one we start at zero and go through all of them, and this one will only two. Yes, that's right. only match that, that value, so there's multiple. Yeah, it, it, this one, we're, yeah, we're calling it just to match that one specifically. Why are you using index versus index zero? Oh, um, <coughs> so if we were to... 
This is a this is a good question. <laughs> this is a really good question. So I've I've only used this in so um, for the recording everything. This the question was why loop dot index on this slide in particular and not loop dot index zero equals um, two. And for for what it's worth, this this is I just like use it wholesale from Morton, just like copy and paste it and it always works. So I never really dug into the difference uh, of why, but. Um, I don't know that this works, so I'll just use this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mike. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yes? I, I just Googled it. <clears throat> it looks like the uh, index 0 is just, uh, starts at 0 and the index starts at 1. So, yeah. Oh. Great. So index starts at index 0, starts at 0, index starts at 1. So we limit our things here and the slide to 2. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yes? I'm, I'm I wonder if you've ever used uh, the twig tweak enter module. Sounds like it's very similar to the twig field value. It's one that I've used before. If you heard that one, get an opinion about that? Or? Yeah, so, um, so the question is why uh, I didn't talk about twig tweak or like the difference between twig tweak contributing module and um, twig field value. I think that it, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but twig tweak does a bit more than the field value. There's a bit more tools available uh, to you to, to use that. Um, I, I'm like a big fan of the field value just because of the enemy reference, sort of the easiness of that. I haven't used tweet tweet <coughs> enemy references in that context, so I'm not sure if it's as straightforward um, in terms of chaining the values there. But uh, tweet tweet is, is like an interesting uh, module. But yeah, I just haven't had as much time using it as the others. Mm -hmm. oh, yes? You stole my question, so. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, here first. Yeah, um, so in Drupal 7, uh, I use the KPR function a lot. Uh, one thing that I liked about that one was that when you run through and find the variable that you're looking for, you're able to get the relative path pretty easily. Is there any way to get a relative path with either a bar, bar dumper or, dumper or can't or any of these other ones? Yeah, um, so for the recording, the question is uh, the relative path using KPR is pretty accessible um, with, uh, and is it as accessible with dump or bar dumper? Um, for, first, uh, just to clarify, like the, the relative path of uh, what in particular? To the particular uh, variable. So uh, in KPR, it spits out all these things, but when you found what you were looking for, you could double click it and give you whether it's objects or arrays, but the how to get to this particular value. With uh, Kent and these other ones, these newer ones, seems like you have to draw your own map all the way to the value that you're looking for. So if, if it's nested six levels deep, you'd have to keep track of which array, objects, <laughs> indexes, and all that. Yeah, so I will say, Dump is not good at helping you find that in and of itself. Kint is a little better. Var dumper uh, with the tool that we have here, um, it's a bit of both worlds. So you can try to click through and, and, and create that sort of pathway, but it doesn't always work. Uh, I think that an easier way of doing that is like combining the debug functions with some of the standard Drupal um, Calls so we're so in this like in our use case we're talking more, more specific within like a preprocessor than um, than like a twig uh, debugger in and of itself so like combining an approach of um, first always try to see if you can you know retrace it using the same sort of methodology you've had with KPR but um, if that doesn't work usually there's some things we can do to at least the object that we find in there to find a specific value or to find uh, something using like um, get or um, value or something like that. Okay. You have, uh, yes? Often when I uh, jump the variable, I still have a hard time like finding the exact value I want and like how the add the long array and most of the array. So do I hand that to find the value you want? Like, like, other than memorizing, like, you know, zero, uh, yeah, um, usually the first approach would just to 
make sure you're calling your field name. So like a few, like if you have, uh, and, that, and it's not always easy. It's like sometimes you don't have access to the configuration to see the machine name of fields. But if you do have that access to call that and just call in value to see what gets output or to pass that into a debug function. Um, if not, you can go deeper or try to open up the stack a bit more and just call in the content variable to see what's available uh, to you. Oh, sorry for the recording. The question was like, how do you, um, it's not always clear like how to get a specific value for a field. Um, in and of itself, like with this uh, presentation in particular with the URL, um, that's like the one that's probably the odd man out in terms of field values and then uh, lists, so like list fields. Those ones usually are a bit different in terms of how you approach them, but most of the time it'd be your like, um, your like entity uh, or content dot your field name dot value to find, uh, to find that value. Yes? Uh, towards the beginning, you had the triple seven functions for a file or sort of URL and place the field to these URL value. Um, I'm assuming that file or sort of URL is a triple specific twin function. Um, and if it is, what are the triple specific twin functions? How do you find that? Yes, um, that's a really uh, good question. So the question is in this talk, we have file underscore URL as a twin function. Um, and, and that is a Drupal specific function. There's a, there's a handful of Drupal specific functions. Um, an easy way to do it is if you just uh, looked at the Twig documentation online. I think that there's, uh, it's less than, I don't know, it's like a handful of Twig functions that are very specific to Drupal. Um, and file URL is, is just one of them. So just the Twig documentation for Drupal will have those filters and um, functions available to us. Yes. Uh, I don't think you had it on your slide, but I encountered a problem where I had the tweak debugger, and I was trying to get a get the value value for this boolean. But when I output the value, the actual like tweak uh, debugging text will be in there as well. So I had to like convert it to a string and then like strip it and then look for false. Like, is there any way to like? Remove that from the DOM, like from when you're getting trying to get just the true or false value. Yes. So, question is, um, when we work with like Boolean fields, sometimes uh, when we try to debug them or try to you know assign a variable to the true or false nature, um, they're always usually populated, right? Like when you try to check for it, like there's things usually within there. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's a. That's been a huge frustration personally of mine. Like my own brute force approach is to pre-process it and do a custom approach in terms of like creating a custom variable um, and then using that to determine uh, whether there's true or false or there's values. Like the consistency of, of, of using some of these things, like there's metadata or other things associated with those content, things that are like use case specific and like somewhat frustrating to, to dig a bit deeper into, but um, I would just try to pre-process it um, instead of trying to handle it within Twig and like using the raw or using all these different filters to, to go through it. Um, but yeah, if you want to talk afterwards, we can talk through it yeah. about that. Uh, any other questions? If not, thank you very much for having me.